Home swap. Are you running on the hamster wheel, wanting a different life? Would you like to swap your shoebox apartment for a country house? Or your country house for an elite apartment? Or maybe replace your elite apartment with a tent in an open field? In our project, anything is possible. We're not bathing our children for three days. We'll enjoy the view and then go back to our trash heap. Nikita, for God's sake, are you crazy? Our new season of Home Swap will feature people exchanging homes, not only across Russia, but also with people in other countries. The Japanese, Russians and Japanese, brothers forever, Panamanians, the Dutch, the Africans. Get off the wheel. Break out of your routine. Come on. Let's go, go, go! Let's go do the home swap. Holy cow! Goats! Where are they? Home swap. Meet the Popo family. Alexei, 27, a steel worker, his wife Yevgenia, 26, a housewife, and their son Ivan, 5. At the moment, Yulia, Yevgenia's 10-year-old sister, is staying with them. They live in a communal flat in the town of Kolpina, Leningrad region. We are the Papa family. We have been together for 11 years, and five months ago, we bought our 180-square-foot room. Our own 180-square-foot room. We saved up as much as we could and paid cash for it. No mortgage for us. We did it on our own. Alexei and Yevgenia have known each other since childhood, and their parents were friends. They were so happy when their children got married, and even happier when they finally bought a room 11 and a half years later. We used to rent big rooms, small rooms, flats. We paid for someone else's dwellings. And here, everything belongs to us. Our own sofa, floor, walls, these 180 square feet. Are a palace for us. A paradise for us. The Popovs bought the 180 square foot room on the outskirts of Kolpina for only $12,700. This tiny dwelling has a dining room, a sitting room, a bedroom, a kid's room, and a fridge. There's enough space even for for a dog, a tiny dog. There's enough space for everyone. As they say, squeezed but pleased. We have a big air mattress, so guests are always very welcome. We are hospitable. We also have a big corridor. We can always put the air mattress there. Although St. Petersburg is half an hour away, the flat in Kolpina is keeping with the best traditions of St. Petersburg communal dwellings. There are two bathrooms, three toilets, and 18 nice and helpful neighbors. Yulia, I need to cook meat. But how? Why not roast it? No, I'd better fry it. It's tastier if roasted. You just do not want me to occupy the cooker. Of course. We need it too. We're hungry after work. Another neighbor is back from work. As usual, it's always crowded here in the evening. I like living in a communal flat. The neighbors are friendly. We share things and food, we talk, we give each other advice. On the other hand, there's always lines. The neighbors take turns to clean the eight-room apartment. The bigger the family, the longer its duty. The Popovs have to clean toilets for a month, but this is only on paper. In fact, it is Yevgenia who bears the burden. Are you done, Yevgenia? What happened? We're having a barbecue today. Do you see all this mess? Everybody took a shower, but nobody cleaned it up. Hurry up, I'm waiting for you. We'll go when I'm done. It would not hurt you to wait a bit. It's my turn to clean the bathroom. If I don't... Come on, take it easy. They'll tell me that I do nothing here. Of course I hate cleaning. I want to have my own apartment to clean up only after my family. I would like to have a three-room apartment in the future. Then I will have to work all three shifts at the factory. Or four, whatever. But Alexei does not want to sweat his guts out. He thinks that the tiny dwelling is the reason to go out more often. There is a good place for barbecue near the river. We enjoy organizing picnics and cycling. The air is fresh and clean, kids have fun, and we can relax too. Water is known to relieve stress, you know? I just love barbecue, and I want to go to the seaside. 
So when are we going to the seaside? You'd rather be at the sea than here. This puddle? Go and swim. I do swim here, and nothing has happened to me so far. Why do you need the sea if you can cycle wherever you want? I guess the barbecue is tastier at the seaside. Just imagine, eating meat, watching the sunset and the sea. I can get you a truck of sand for my work. You will make a beach of it and sunbathe. You'll have everything you need to be happy for life. What else do you want? Actually, Kolpina is not that far from the sea, but it is the Gulf of Finland which is cold. While Yevgenia obviously has something a bit warmer in mind, I'm quite happy with our life. All in all, everything is fine for now, and I think we can live without changing anything for now. We should aspire to having better living conditions that other people have. Our living conditions are no worse. I would like to live far, far better. For Yevgenia, home swap is a chance to prove Alexei, who is easygoing about where to live, that living in a communal flat is not the limit of their ambitions. Home swap. Meet the Vidrin family. Daniel, 33, runs a law office. His wife, Irina, 33, works at a bank. They have two kids, Yegor, 9, and Stefania, 3. They live in the village of Zalesnaya, near the city of Perm. We are the Vidrin family. We built this house by ourselves to sell it, but nobody bought it due to the economic crisis in 2009, so we decided to live here. It is quite understandable why nobody bought the house. The price for the 3,400-square-foot house was $148,000. It has a vast living room, a kitchen, a master bedroom, two kids' rooms, and two bathrooms. The 11,800-square-foot yard has a summer house, a Russian sauna, a place for barbecue, and a hen house. Most of the yard and the attic are devoted to the children, as well as the rest of the three-story house. Come on, Yegor, turn. Let me keep the goal. Okay. We have a wonderful family. Kids play sports and we encourage them to do so. Our kids are everything to us. The area that is not occupied by kids is adapted for their parents' hobbies. Irina grows roses while Danil breeds hens. By the way, the hens love the roses. Hens! Are you hungry? Let's go. Here are the eggs. Great job, hens. Well done. We decided to breed hens because there was always some trash in the corner of the yard. My wife was always grumbling at me. So I decided to build a hen house. Now it is beautiful and cozy, and we have fresh eggs. The first attempt at breeding didn't work out. Shurik the dog killed all the hens which were left unattended. Daniel had to buy new chickens, which he took under his wing. Now Shurik chooses not to mess with the hens. Neither the dog nor I ever come to the hen house. He kills them, and I simply don't like them. Why don't you like them? Why should I like them? Don't you like eggs? Not really. Well, don't eat them anymore then. Fine, I won't. Irina and Daniel have known each other since high school. They have been married for 12 years. But time passes and every year their marriage seems less ideal. Over the past three years, we've had a few fights. We even came close to a divorce once. Daniel, who on earth left this dirty plate upstairs again? Not me. Who else could have done it in our house? Maybe you did it. I did? You. Clean up your plate now. Why should I clean up your plate? It's yours, so you clean it yourself. We often swear at each other. We have scandals without any serious reason. We do not let bygones be bygones. I want a happy family for our kids so that they never see us quarrel. I'm trying to change the situation. Irina consulted a psychologist to overcome family problems. Perhaps she should have talked to her husband instead. He is sure he knows the root of their problems. This is all because of her moping around the house. My wife has been a housewife for seven years. She can make huge mountains out of tiny little molehills. But in fact, it's no big deal. Unfortunately, the psychologist did not help. So Irina decided to take part in our program. Perhaps, after the project, I'll see if we can be a real team, if he really is my soulmate. At home, we may very well go to different rooms, lock the door, and not talk to each other for a while, but we won't be able to do that while we're participating in all this. Again, she invents problems and thinks that her life is hard, but it's not true. Let her spend three days in the middle of nowhere to get an idea of whether her life is good or bad. Home Swap will give Irina and Daniel a chance to break the routine and test their marriage in a new context. Home Swap. 
Home Swap enables two families to exchange their houses and lifestyles, as well as their cars, their household problems, and even the way they spend their free time. They also leave each other the amount of money they usually spend themselves in three days. I guess $140 should be enough. I think it's too little. For what? For food. What food? They'll have cucumbers, potatoes, hens and eggs. They won't starve. Anyway, they could eat Shurik the dog, or Shurik could eat up the new masters. I think they have kids. No, it's enough. And the kids might want ice cream and stuff. Don't be stingy. No. Let's leave more. No, that's not enough. Do you spend more money? Your salary is $140. It's $155, not $140. Okay, $155. Well, my monthly salary for three days? All settled? No. Why not? We should leave $155. We already did. Plus one cent. Give this cent then. Okay. It'll take him ages. Here you are, $155 and one cent from Yegor. Very well. $155.15. You're driving me mad. No, you're making me mad. Give me 10 cents. Here you are, 10 cents. Very well. $155.15. Let's note that mom's salary is $155 and Yegor's is 15 cents. And they are not stingy, unlike their father. How much should we leave? I think $7. No way. It's got to be at least 60 Why so much money? They're cereal. They won't starve. Well, if I go in to buy food for the whole month. Alexei, our monthly budget is $70. I can live three days for $7. I don't know. Or even a week. Fine, let's make it 30, okay? This is too much, too. They'll buy eggs, milk, bread, and that's it. Yes, and that'd be that for your $7. Anyway, our neighbors could help them. What if they want to go downtown for a walk? They could cycle there. Cycle to St. Petersburg? Yes. Why don't they walk to Kolpino? Well, fine then, have it your way. But maybe $14. Maybe $10. No, not 10 if they left $15, it would be almost 10 times less than the sum waiting for them in Perm. We should have left 60. No way. Home swap. To make sure the houses are returned to their owners in their original state and that each guest fully experiences the host's way of life, the families write down guidelines. As proof that they have been following them, they will take photos. This week we are responsible for cleaning, aren't we? Yes, we are. Who will do it when we are away? I hope the lady is responsible and will clean everything. Then we should take a photo and leave them with a little housework to do. Okay, I'll hold the bucket. According to the rules of our apartment, all the roommates take turns to clean it. This week, it's our job to do it. Usually it's the wife who cleans everything. And the husband is the breadwinner. This is fair, isn't it? I hope Ludmila will help them. Well, if they find the mob, she will always find a task for them. Daniil. Yes? Let's take a photo of the hen so that our guests do not forget to feed them. Of course, why not? The first rule. Every morning, feed the hens. Take the eggs from them and mow the lawn. It's you who is in charge of it. Then may the husband do it. Richie, Richie, come here. We gotta let them know that they need to take him for a walk five times a day. According to the rules of our house, we walk Richie five times a day. I hope they won't hurt him. I'm so worried. I'm sure they're nice and won't hurt him. Every Friday. We go out. Ask the grandmother to babysit our kids and... Go clubbing. Write it. Our guests are arriving tomorrow. We should advise them to have a barbecue. And enjoy our beautiful landscapes. Almost beautiful. According to the rules of our house, every week we organize a barbecue next to our house. All right. So, Irina, finally the third rule. You're all the time like, so Irina, so Irina. Don't make me come over there. Oh, I'm so scared. Rule number three. Every weekend we go to our sauna. You're a dummy. Just write it. Everyone's wishes and hopes are duly noted. Now it is time to swap homes. The Popovs are going to the village of Zalesnaya near the Urals, and the Vidrins are going to enjoy the picturesque scenery of Kolpino in the Leningrad region. Welcome to your new homes. Day one. Well, so... There are no detached houses here. This building looks like a dorm. Cool. All the windows are different, everything looks gray and depressing. And when we entered the building... Damn, what a great home swap. Yeah, the second floor. Yes, apartment number eight. Somebody puked over here. 
Somebody puked over here. If the staircase is such a dirty mess... Holy cow. Irina, what the hell did you get us into? Apartment 8. Open the door. How? The key's different. Just ring the bell. I'm sure they have a grandmother here. And a grandfather. Seems like nobody's home. Let's go. Hello? Hello. Apartment 8. Yes. We're your guests. Come in. Maybe you need someone else. Does someone else live here? I'm a babysitter. God. They either left us their kids or this is a communal flat. What do you need? If only we knew. We have no idea. We only have a key with a rabbit on it. Do you know who has a key with a rabbit on it? I don't live here. Oh, great. When we entered, we saw that it was a communal flat. We expected something even worse than the staircase. Irina, what did you get us into? I had no idea. Did you expect a tour to Mallorca? Well, not to Mallorca. At least a house. Try to unlock this door. Not this one. There is someone in the room. Irina, I guess this is the right one. No, not this one. But why? Are there more rooms? Yes, over there. Oh, my God. It was like a maze of doors. And washing machines and laundry. We'll be able to do laundry here. Yeah, right. And take a shower. Have you heard about escape rooms? This quest is a bit harder. You need to enter the room. The prize is the opportunity to sleep in a bed and not on a dirty staircase. Here's the kitchen. Your stovetop is over there, to the right. I won't cook anything. Cool. Super cool. I'm a bit shocked. I would even say appalled. As bad luck would have it, the room we needed was the last one in the corridor. A dog. A dog. Amazing. This dog is so... What? Small? Yes, just what you don't like. Just what I do not like. Holy crap. He pissed here. Off. Down. What kind of dog is this? Our cat is three times as big as this dog. This family has a tiny house and a tiny dog. Well, we swapped 3,400 square feet for 190. Damn, I thought it would be at least two rooms. I wish it was a house. I would not even mind cows, hens, and this creature. How are we going to sleep here? We sleep here and kids over here. Anyway, they could occupy the doghouse. It is warm and cozy. Come on, stop it. I thought we sorted it out, bro. We thought that they had left a tiny dog, but a minute later we understood it was the devil, not a dog. Hey, it must be the host family who are staying at our house. Let's take a look. For God's sake, will you stop it? This is my least favorite breed. Is this adult clothes? Let's take a look. 2XL. Double XL. A really small man. Well, the room is small, so are the people. The small dog turned out to guard the small room like a big watchdog. He did not shun any means in his fight against the strangers. The cat pissed over there. It was a dog, not a cat. Okay, not a cat. It's so wet. But it looks like a cat. I want to touch that. And what is this? Are you chewing things? Don't hurt him. Look at his eye. He was chewing and pissing, pissing and chewing. Guard your clothes. Big ears. The dog needs to live outdoors. And people must live in a three-story home. This is the way the Vedrins see things. And now the Popovs are going to share their view. Home swap. Good gracious. This is a place. My heart sank. Three floors. Such a big house. Lucky strike. The god is not blind. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. Ivan, where are you going? See the second floor, there's one more! <laughs> Yvonne, so much space to run! Oh, it seems to be the parents' bedroom. We'll sleep here. It's a bit hard. It's wonderful to have a separate room for parents, and this one is so big. Their bedroom is as big as all our dwelling. A dressing room. Wow, look at this beauty! You'll wear it to go out and feed the hens. I saw them in the yard. And collect eggs. A dressing room is my dream. I can organize a dressing room for you, but it would occupy half our room. Son, look at this car. Looks like Ivan's paradise. Mom, a game console. Kids' room is super cool. Our son dreams of it. And the whole floor devoted to games was beyond Ivan's wildest dreams. Oh my god. Mom, there are so many toys. This is to work out. Wow. 
Wow, look at the shower. Oh, wow. My dream is to take a shower here. You have a shower at home. How can you compare the shower and the one we have? Well, yeah, this is an unforgettable experience. Awesome. Our flat and this house? Have nothing to do with each other. Yes, indeed. They're from different planets. It is time to come down to Earth. The ground floor has much more interesting things, too. The kitchen is amazing. Look, they did not wash up. This is fair. You left them a dirty flat, and they left you dirty dishes. I guess there must be a dishwasher here. Maybe. Yeah, and here it is. A big kitchen? Your own big kitchen? Is just wonderful. You won't be like sardines in a can. There are no cues, but I suppose there is plenty of housework. This is a young family. They have a daughter and a son. Mother is pretty. They have many doors, too. The first one is a bathroom. It's so cool to have two bathrooms. Well, actually, we also have three bathrooms and two showers. First come, first serve. You snooze, you lose. This is the exit to the garage. Bicycles and a sauna. Look. This must be a living room. And a fireplace. Wow. It must be so cozy in the evening. Light the fire and watch some cereal. Yes. This house is generally cozy, both in the evening and in the morning, even without the fire lit. I'm amazed. The house is big and has many rooms. The family who lives here did a great job. They are so young and already have something. You call it something. But Yevgenia has not seen the yard yet. It is also big and has plenty of things to see. Wow. It's so beautiful. A barbecue. To spend summer evenings here. Here are the hens. What do they give us, Ivan? Roosters. No, eggs. He's right. Roosters do hatch from eggs. Sometimes if their eggs are not eaten by people. They have a dog. Don't come too close. I won't approach it at all. Hey, doggy, don't be afraid of us. We're afraid of you ourselves. The Vidrins seem to be more afraid of the dog. This chihuahua keeps them on their toes from the first second. Get out of here. He's crazy. Go guard the mink coat. This is gross. Now we see who runs the house and who is going to tow the line. Choking down tears. Never mind, we'll survive. You just don't care about it. The kids are already asleep. Igor, are you okay? She's still asleep. She hasn't seen anything yet. Kids will like him, but he's aggressive. What if he bites them? Let's introduce our own rule. The dog must live outdoors. We're not that cruel. It's not about being cruel. According to the Popov's rules, their dog almost lives outdoors. You must walk Richie five times a day. So how many times? Why do you piss here then? You walk five times a day? Five times? If you walk your dog five times a day, you don't have time to work at all. According to the rules of the house, every week we organize a barbecue next to it. Next to what? Next to the house. Where? On the flower bed? On the lawn? Just imagine, you're having a barbecue under the windows of this house, and your neighbors are drooling on you, or just pouring water on you, shouting, stop this smell. Oh, I do not like this photo. According to the rules of our communal flat, flatmates take turns to clean it. This week, it is our duty. Usually, it is the wife who cleans everything. The wife. The wife. Excellent. I've had enough of it at home. Arena cleaning company. Just call my number. <laughs> oh, no. You'd better call the cleaning company now. Crap, what is this? Did he piss himself? Pisser. They would take us to the seaside. To the seaside. Take that. Enjoy. Crap. Home swap. Rule one. Every morning, father feeds the hens, takes the eggs from them, and mows the grass. So, Dad, go and take the eggs. Dealing with hens is a challenge for me. It's time for a new experience. They'll peck me to death. Come on, try it. What if they're mad? Rule number two. Perhaps it's for me. Something about cleaning? No. Something about beautiful clothes. Every week we ask the grandmother to babysit our kids and go clubbing. This is so cool. But who will we ask to babysit our kids? We'll find somebody. Perhaps they could ask Shurik the dog to act like a granny. Hens do not look reliable. 
The sauna. Every Saturday, we go to our sauna. We're all in. I do not think we'll have troubles with the sauna. Nor the club. Let's go party. <laughs> Hopefully, the budgets will cover party and cleaning expenses. Do you hear the sound? Coins. Let's see what's inside. Six cents. Fifteen cents. That's interesting. There are no shops here. What would we spend money on? What do you spend money on in a village? They have hens, kill one, and cook soup. Fortunately, the Popovs found the banknotes in the envelope, which saved several innocent hens. Fifteen. Interesting. It's one fifty-five and fifteen cents. The budget is fine. Yes. Fifteen cents. Why this strange sum? One fifty-five and fifteen. Perhaps their lucky number is fifteen, and we left them a fourteen. So the budget. Please, not fifteen bucks. You're almost there. Fourteen bucks for you. Hey. It is for us, for three days. It was amazing. As much as $14. For three days, for us and two kids? Now they are less eager to call the cleaning service. Very generous hosts. We are so grateful. Organizing a barbecue solely costs more than $14. Our budget is something. Plus, we need to feed him. They quickly figured out what the dog was supposed to eat, though they were thinking of keeping it hungry so that it would not bark. Look, the dog food. Pasta and sausage. Pasta. No, it's mashed potatoes. The human diet is pretty much the same. There are sausages and pasta in the fridge. Cooked. No. The next quest is to find the Popov's table at the kitchen, and pasta is the key to it. How could we find their table? Is there a note? This one is not ours, because here pasta is not in the fridge. Here somebody has just eaten a tomato, so no, not this one either. There is no pasta here, but again, somebody has cooked here. Perhaps this one's ours. Look, there's pasta. So, according to you, it's not our table. Hello. Hello. Hello, we're your new neighbors for the coming three days. Very well. For three days. I'm Irina. Daniel. I'm Ludmila. Could you tell us where is our host table? This is your table. And this one? It's your host table too. They left this mess yesterday. You are to clean it up. This week it's your duty. You clean the cookers, sinks in the kitchen and bathrooms, two showers, three toilets, and the floor. Every day? Hello? Hello? Yes, every day. Irina. Anna. Daniel. I thought it was a guest toilet, our own toilet, and kids' toilet. But no, each toilet is shared by three families. Game of toilets. I'm going to bed. I worked all night. In the evening, I'll check everything. They did not even clean the cooker. Okay, we'll take measures. Enjoy the meal. Thank you. This lady, Ludmila, is the boss of the communal flat. She's like a watchdog. While Miss Ludmila is sleeping after such a major showdown, pasta is being cooked and Irina and Daniel are evaluating the situation. Let's see what you are to clean. There's no toilet paper. Shower number one. Look, somebody must live in that hole. That was gross. There's mold on the ceiling. A mold carpet. This is the second one. The doors are okay. This is not crap, is it? Somebody crapped in the shower. Perhaps it was Richie. He went there to do the second thing he can do. First is to piss, and second is... To poo. In total? In total, it is holy crap. Our kids won't take a shower here. I guess they can live without a shower for three days. We won't take a shower. Anyway, nobody will notice the smell because it generally stinks in here. While the Vidrins are enjoying the odor of the communal flat, the Popovs are trying the local eggs. Let's have a look. Eggs are here and here. They're organic. Some of them even dirty. Pasta. Pasta with meatballs. And that's it. The hungry Popovs are going to heat up the leftovers, but it's slim pickings. I guess we'll eat all the soup. We should go to the supermarket. No sooner said than done. Having eaten the soup, the Popovs went shopping for food. How should we find a shop? Why not ask someone? It is a village. Shall we drive to the shop? Do you think it'll be easier? I would like to drive such a car. To feel like it's my house. My car. Okay, our house and our car. Put the scooter away. Well, let's try to find the key. It's open. Oh, the car is not locked. We need to find the key. Hurry up! We should hear the keys beeping. The alarm is the Popov's recompense for leaving the Chihuahua at home. Fortunately, the car does not bite. I guess I saw it here. Maybe this one. Try it. Let's go. Eventually, we found the key. I found the key. I'm helpful. And Alexei's not. I need to put the key somewhere, but I don't understand where. 
Maybe I should just place it here without inserting? No, there's still the message that the key is missing. Then you need to insert it somewhere. Very well. Oh, the key. But where do I put it in here? Maybe over the wheel? No, not there. He was trying to find the hole to put the key in. You're a man. You're supposed to know about everything about cars. Had it been a Russian car, I would have easily started it. But I've never driven such a car. The seat heater buttons and... What is this? It can't be inserted here, can it? Maybe it's in the driver's seat. No. We have a car, but we can't start it. Yes. I think we'd better take the bikes. Damn it. And the samurais win the clash of the Russian wit and Japanese technologies. Alexei only had to put the key in the pocket and press the button. I can ride a bike at home, but as long as I'm here, I wanted to drive a car to feel... Like a queen. Exactly. Home swap. Unfortunately, since Alexei failed the role of a royal driver, the family has to ride bikes as they do in Kolpina. Where are the brakes? <laughs> Easy. Ours are more comfortable. Hello. Could you tell us where the shop is? Over there? Thank you. Hey, Sharik, show us the shop. Supervised by Sharik, who's actually Shurik, the Popovs are looking for the shop. Meanwhile, the Vidrins do not have the money or reason to go shopping. They still have food. Why are the sausages so ugly? How should we peel them? Because they're cheap. Oh, it fell. The sausages looked awful. They turned into pulp. I think there is no meat in them. Do you want some? I do not want it anymore. I just can't eat it. Give it to the dog. Hey, Richie, come here. He's eating it. And pasta, too. Maybe the sausages were for him. When we gave him the sausage, we understood that it was his food. But one sausage was not enough for Richie. What do you want? Go away. Are you mad? I've just fed you. Okay, you fed him, but now it's time to walk him. How are we going to dress the dog? Look, I gave him a sausage and you dress him. I won't touch him. Me neither. Take one more. Good boy. Put out your paw. A paw? Dream on. <laughs> he actually asked him to shake, not bite the hand off. At least Richie was not offended, but Daniel hardly saved his jeans. He's a real predator, like a cheetah. You know the film Alien? Yeah, they look alike. I do not want to walk him. The dog is small, but I'm afraid of him. May I take the suitcase? <laughs> Poor Richie is on house arrest today. As for the Popovs, they finally cycled to the shop. Oh, look, the local mall. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Do you sell some farm food? Milk? Cottage cheese? No, no farm food. Maybe somewhere nearby? No, not in this village. But this is a village. It's close to the city. The Popovs decided to compensate for the absence of farm food with not-so-healthy alternatives. Sausages, please. Juice? Peaches? Yes, sausages. And this meat jelly, please. Yeah. And a can of soda. Two cans. And chips for kids. And bananas. Ivan loves bananas, doesn't he? That's all, thanks. Do you want watermelon? No. $14.90. The prices are surprisingly low. We bought two bags of food. At home, we buy so much food for a week. And pay much more than here. They reached home quickly despite heavy bags. Store is no sore. We may start washing up, and I'll start cooking the dinner. Okay. I've never used a dishwasher before, but if I like it, we'll buy one for ourselves. Anyway, we have no place for it. Where do I put it? Here? Now I need to press play. Where's this button? This is to switch it off. So, switch on? Cool, let's go. Actually, we usually press play to start the music. Perhaps this is an advanced dishwasher which can both wash up and play music. It's so cool. Load it, press the button, and enjoy. Just like I saw it on TV. But something went wrong. Oh no. Sailing in the open sea. So much foam. It was a catastrophe. I found a towel. Bring it. They'll wash it later. It's cheaper than changing the laminate flooring. Wait, this one looks older. Mom, may I play? I don't know. Wait, I'm busy now. Look, there's water here too. Wow, it's a whole flood. I was worried about the flooring. What if we had to change it afterwards? It would cost the Popovs an arm and a leg. And the trip to the seaside, so much anticipated by Yevgenia, would go down the drain. I would give them our flooring and fix it by myself. It's never brown, but never mind. Let me check it. It's so wet. 
I'll blow on it. Well, we were at odds with the dishwasher. I just switched it off. God sees all and knows all, I thought. So what conclusion do we draw? You do not need a dishwasher. Yeah, sorry, but screw it. While the Popovs are trying to dry the expensive flooring, Irina faces a more challenging task of cleaning the communal flat under the watchful eye of the flatmates. Don't forget about sinks and cookers. Yeah, the sinks, it's dripping. The cooker's dirty. Don't forget to clean it. You can hardly forget anything with such thoughtful supervisors. Cleaning? Yes. Don't forget to clean the sink, please. Of course, they already told me. Home swap. The neighbors seem to place bets on Arena. Will she be able to clean everything that has not been cleaned in years? My goodness, Irina, let me show you. With the cooker, the problem is that you have to remove this thing. You see, it's so dirty. So remove this thing and clean under it. Okay. I was cleaning under the watchful eye of all the flatmates. At home, I give orders to cleaning workers. Here, it was the other way around. Having absorbed valuable recommendations of all the neighbors, Irina hid in a quiet bathroom. Irina, how are things? Very bad. Could you please help me with the cleaning? But how? Take the sponge and clean the sinks. I won't clean anything. I won't finish even in three days. Whose fault is that? What do you mean? Whose idea was it to swap homes? Yours? It serves you right. You're useless. Irina's idea was actually to find out if her husband and she can work in a team. So far, Denil is failing the test spectacularly. I'll look after the kids. Stefania is sleeping. And Yegor? And the dog. I won't touch it anymore. Why did you come to me then? To have fun. We divide responsibilities. I'm in charge of yeah. taking out the trash. You're a hero. And Arena is in charge of everything else. Easy tasks for the husband. The rest is for the wife. This is the way Daniel sees teamwork. Wow, you made it to the toilets. Yes. Do I have to clean all three? Ask Ludmila. Do I have to clean all three toilets? Yes. All three. Clean them well. Why all three? Because it's your turn. But they don't use all of them. Who are they? If it's your turn, you clean all the toilets. But we don't even piss here. Then take advantage. Clean everything well. It's your duty this week. Eventually, Ludmila was my boss. Very strict boss. The boss of mops and sponges was so strict, not because she loved it, but for the good of all the flatmates. Yes, I watch if everything is clean. I check if they clean everything well. The rules exist for all, for those who've lived here forever and for newcomers. Irina, let's take a photo to prove that we followed at least one house rule. We are useful. While Irina is up to her eyes in work and Ludmila's advice, the guests in her house are up to having fun. Hey, guys. Oh, we have guests. Hello. I'm Senia. Alexei. Yevgenia. Nice to meet you. Kate, we are Irina and Daniil's best friends. We are here to invite you to go clubbing. Please, be welcome. Take a seat. The girls called on us. They were quite bossy, as if it was their house. They did not even knock. Friday, clubbing and stuff. What if I was in my underwear. Had he been wearing just underwear, they would have taken him for an amateur stripper. But we have kids, what should we do? Never mind, we can organize a party here. Let's call Alex then. Perfect, Alex will come and bring us everything we want. As simple as that. If the Popovs can't go out, the party will arrive at their house within 15 minutes. Oh, finally. Finally, music, let's drink to it. Amazing. I'll even stand up. <laughs> DJ is there, meats marinated, wine and champagne flow like water, just eat, drink and dance. The neighbors heard the music and came round, not to quarrel, but to join the party. No problems with the noise. Yevgenia. Hello. How are you? I'm Alexei. Yevgenia. Where are the hosts? They left. Really? We're here for them. Excellent. For three days. The barbecue is underway. The friends are partying. Yevgenia has got into the role of a hospitable hostess. The barbecue is ready. Just like I taught you. In the meantime, Alexei is sharing the secret recipe of barbecue a la Kolpina. Am I doing it right? Okay. Yes, put it here and I'll arrange the pieces. We'll have a meat team. Yeah, right. Cool. Great job. 
Barbecue is such fun, isn't it? Senia, why don't you leave Alexei in peace? No, it's such an interesting process. The smell is amazing. Yeah, I enjoy the smell. Of what? Of Alexei. They spent their an hour and a half doing barbecue. At home, it takes them 15 minutes. The pieces were big. At home, they're smaller. I thought, beat it. Get out of here already. What? Actually, I would cook more meat. Why don't you join the guys at the table? We'll have a serious conversation at home. <laughs> the kids did not like the party, though. It was so noisy and crowded, but not as crowded as the communal flat. You promised to come back soon. I'll come when we're done here. But the guests want the party to go on. Let's go to the sauna. I thought we would call it a night. It's 2 in the morning. It's only 11 in Perm. Yes, it's just the beginning. Maybe tomorrow? You're in Perm now. Go to the freaking sauna? I want to sleep. No, we're going to bed. It's 2 a.m. It's 2 a.m.? And they want to sleep. The Vedrins weren't like this. But we're not the Vedrins. We're the Popovs. Too bad. Let's go. What a tough woman. Everybody dance now. If only they could move this party to Kopina under Ludmila's watch for life. She could find a socially useful task for everybody. Since the guests are partying, the kids are sleeping upstairs. As for the parents, they are so tired after such an eventful day that they put aside comfort and fall asleep on the sofa, just like in their communal flat. The only difference is loud music in the yard. I hope nothing will happen. They'll wake us, if anything. Yes, you're right. Okay, good night, then. Good night. The Vidrins are also going to bed. The potty does not fit in here. How do they live here? That's gross. Stefania, will you piss in the same place as the dog? He'll sleep over there. Oh, wow, look what he did. He pissed on the bed. Such a naughty dog. He is one of Kolpina's tourist attractions. Richie Pissy. Listen, with this dog, soon we'll use all their bed sheets. Damn, no beds to sleep on and this dog who can't stop pissing. That's why the house rule is to walk Richie five times a day. Dad! Again, really? I think this freaking dog is doing it on purpose to drive us mad. He didn't go out today. What do you want? So he was holding it in all day long to do it when we're going to bed? When will this day be over? Stefania, go to bed. I'll wrap us in cellophane. What do you think? Well, if the dog pisses on it, I won't sleep here. We'll just leave. Day two. After their first night in a communal flat, the Vidrin's morning is far from bright and cheerful. Irina, wake up. Irina, you must. And this damned dog kept me up all night. The night was awful. Richie was barking and crawling around. Could he have pissed on us? That's why it stinks here. Actually, it was you who stank, so he pissed on you. If you're not used to taking a shower after 18 neighbors, then you won't be able to get rid of the smell. In the morning, there was no trace left of Arena's cleaning feet. I won't take a shower here. Look, it's so interesting. When the shower drips, snails come out. I won't take a shower there. I have no idea who used it before me. We'd rather use the hose. Amazing. Amazing. That's what I call a life hack, huh? Ah, Arena! Contrast shower is followed by continental breakfast in the best traditions of health resorts. Omelette of fried eggs? Fried eggs with sausage. What sausage? The one we had yesterday? No, I won't eat anymore. Damn it. Ouch! You stupid dog! Richie decided to have Stefania for breakfast. So much blood! Freaking dog? It was a tragedy. Stefania wanted to give Richie a stroke, but he attacked her and bit her hand. He attacked her face, but she protected it with her hands. It was very scary. Stefania, do not touch this demon at all. I didn't mean it. I told you, he's a demon. Come on, calm down. He bit her hand. Get out of here. He keeps us up all night, bites our kids. We can't live like this. But they have nowhere to go. So, Danil, a matador with sausage instead of a red flag and a chihuahua instead of a bull. Take it, Richie. He'll bite you too. He's coming. Take it, Richie. Sausage, sausage. Take the sausage. Come on. Go out. Go over there. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. But he takes the sausage. He's not leaving the room. 
Let's go to the kitchen and leave him here. Let's go. Leave the door open. Maybe he'll go out. Easy, easy, Stefania. Daniel was not the greatest matador. The beast was sated, and he will not seed. Seems like the Vidrins have to walk the dog without the dog. Meanwhile, the Popovs have guests again. Why are you sleeping? Did you see the time? Oh, hello. Hello. Hens are hungry. The kitchen is a mess. The yard is a mess. What time is it? That's what I asked you. Who are you? I'm Irina's mother, Nadezhda. I'm Alexei. Evgenia. Yesterday, Irina's friends called on us. We didn't do anything. Too bad. Hens are hungry. The morning was fun. She was like, why are you sleeping, you lazy bastards? Hens are hungry. I jumped to my feet like, what should I do? Just agree and obey. If compared to Irina's mother, Ludmila from Kolpino is an angel. Let me check the kids. You have kids too? My son and my sister Yulia. Why is Yulia sleeping here? There's another bed. Ivan, are you okay? What happened? There are spots all over his body. Let me take a look. Take off the shirt. And on the head, too. Yes, on the head. It's chicken pox. I was shocked. I was in panic. What should I do? Why are you crying? I'm worried. Don't worry, it'll be okay. We'll heal him. We need to go to the doctor. Self-curing is no good. Those blisters were awful. I was in panic. We had to go to the doctor. Immediately. As a result, it was Irina's mother who fed the hens, and Alexei and Yevgenia went to the doctor with Ivan. The bus stop is about a mile away. Shall we call a taxi, maybe? Hello, miss. I need a taxi. 30 Shkolnaya Street? Okay, thanks. We're waiting. They'll find a taxi for us within five minutes. Let's wait. Five minutes later, we got a message that no taxis could be found for our address. No taxi. We should ask the neighbors. Maybe here? Let's go then. It is much harder to ask the neighbors for a favor if you live in a detached house, not a communal flat. Hello, is that your car over there? Yes, it is my car. Could you give us a lift to the city? We need to take our son to the doctor. He's got spots all over his body. Yeah, let's go. Right now? Yeah, let me change first. Of course. The neighbors in Zalesnaya turned out to be as helpful as those in Kuopina. And Irina's mother, who looks severe, asked to keep her posted and even gave the address of the children's hospital. All right, he's ready. Thank you. Get in, Ivan. Fasten the belt. Okay, fine, let's go. The Popovs, alarmed, are on their way to the hospital, while the Vidrins, also alarmed, are trying to complete the house rules. Screw these toilets. One day, somebody will ask me, Irina, what do you remember most about Home Swap? And I'll answer, toilets. I feel like a galley slave. Home Swap. Daniel decided that walking Richie is a matter of honor and changed the tactics. Yeah, yeah, like this. One more time. How do I dress you? Put out your paws. Oh, finally. Well done. Good boy. Finally. You tamed him. Kindness can help tame a demon in dog form. So we completed the second rule. On day two only, but never mind. Walking the dog, they went to the market to buy everything for the barbecue. Hello. Could you tell us if there's a market nearby? Yes, there's one. Do you see those cars? It's over there. Thanks so much. Richie almost jumped from joy after being locked at home after a day. He is so fast. Nose out meat. Sniffer dog. The sniffing chihuahua led them to the final destination. I wonder if dogs are allowed here. I'll ask. Dogs are allowed? Who knows? It's risky to hold Richie in your arms, so he has to walk. Let's go, sniffing dog. This is fat. And here's meat. Miss, there are no dogs allowed here. There's a note at the entrance. We did not see it. Dogs are not allowed. We'll just buy some meat and leave, okay? Dogs are not allowed. We were told off for entering the shop with the dog. We passed through the market and no one said anything. You couldn't just call it a dog. More cat than dog. So Richie was downgraded from a demon to a cat. But even this did not move the strict market watchdog to pity. We'd like pork. A big piece of pork, please. Maybe for 8.45. Why? Well, it is a market, isn't it? No, this is a shopping center. No problem. The staff welcomed them so warmly that they did not let the Vidrins go. 
We have kids here. Over there. Go over there. We have kids here. So what? You do not let me out? No, dogs are not allowed here. We're leaving. You said dogs are not allowed, so we went to the exit here. And we want to. I won't let you exit here. And who are you? I'm the boss here. May we exit here? Go over there. He would not let us out. He was shouting, not explaining anything. Shouting, swearing, and flourishing arms. So if you end up more than 10 miles away from the second Russian capital, be ready to meet fantastic beasts. This species, for instance, is a market dragon. He spares no pains to protect his treasure, the market, against tiny dogs. I asked if dogs are allowed here, and they told me yes. No, they aren't. Irina, just leave them alone. Don't shout at me, okay? Never mind. I'll find you later. Fantastic. We have four dollars left. We're driven out of the market. Why? Because we're with this... Dummy. Yes, dummy is the right word. Fortunately, we managed to buy meat and escape from the market. But they could not leave the kids without fruit. We have only 490 left. Is it enough? Excellent. Could you choose a melon for us? For 140. Thank you so much. That was something, but at least we'll lose weight. Meanwhile, the Popovs reached the hospital. Yevgenia is trying to find a doctor, while her husband and sister are waiting in the car. Hello, miss, could you please help me? We arrived here for three days, and this morning I found spots all over my son's body. Looks like chicken pox. Can we see a doctor now? The children's hospital is upstairs. Okay, thanks. Hello, could you help me? Yes, of course they could, but they won't. The guy just told us to get lost. They had no children's doctor. You could just take a look at my son and tell if it's chicken pox or allergy or something else. She just said no and goodbye. At least they gave me the number of the emergency medical service. Thanks. This is chicken pox. Well, we didn't see the doctor, but they told us either to call the ambulance, but he doesn't have a fever, or call the emergency medical service after five. Actually, they could afford to pay for a private medical service, but they opted for folk medicine. That is, they asked folks. Could you help us? You know something about medicine. Could you take a look? Is this chicken pox? He has spots, maybe. Chicken pox? Come on, Ivan. We're not locals. We're staying here for three days. We can't see a doctor. Show me. Look, spots all over the body. Looks like chicken pox. Use the brilliant green. Has he got a fever? No. Not yet. But we'd buy a remedy for fever. Four dollars. Since they bought a remedy against chicken pox, then Ivan has chicken pox. Yevgenia is going to call Irina's mother. He has no fever now, does he? No. Then how about a boat tour? Well, why not? Well then, I'll text you the address where you should go. Okay, I see. Bye and good luck. Why not? We have the baseball cap and the remedies. Let's go! The Vedrans also have their own boat, which they take advantage of every weekend. Boating on the Kama River. What do we owe you? Four dollars. Thank you so much. You saved us. Goodbye. The Popovs had no difficulty calling a taxi in the city. As for the Vidrins, they are preparing meat, which cost them an arm, a leg, and some nerves. The knives are dull. The dogs are dull. The dog should stay home. It's his punishment. We left them such easy rules. Go to the sauna, and we have to quarrel at the market. Find a place for barbecue. How are we going to grill the meat? On sticks? Fortunately, they have helpful neighbors. Do you happen to have a barbecue grate to grill meat? Yes, you can take it. Okay, thank you so much. With the help of kind neighbors, the Vedrins quickly got all the necessary stuff for the barbecue and were even shown the best place for it. Look, there's a river. Crime location, I would say. There's even a fire pit. But the location turned out to be not so impressive for the sophisticated Vedrins. What a crazy idea to have a barbecue in a city. Are these people insane? So it's common here? It seems so common for them. I'm at a loss. Stefania, don't pick up trash, please. To hell with this place. Home swap. The demon is locked in the flat. To complete the hellish image, they need to make a fire and cook meat. It'll take ages to cook meat on this grate. Tiny house, tiny barbecue grate, everything is tiny. And people are like ants. Yes. Do they normally barbecue like this? I love it in a big way. My grill is three times as big as this one. You're also three times as big as these guys. The men in Perm are so big that Kolpino flats and grills are too small for them. I'm done. Oh no. You had better not grill meat if you are on edge. 
The meat drops to the ground, much to the delight of local dogs, while the Vidrins will have to stuff themselves with pasta and Richie's sausage. I'm sick of this place. I just want to find myself at home. I am so fed up with everything. The Vidrins are forcing a smile for the picture, and the Popovs are in a local cafe, waiting for the boat tour and enjoying grilled meat, which is much tastier than that in Kalpino. We had lunch. I covered Ivan's spots with brilliant green to be on the safe side. Are you full? Yes. Hello. We're here for a boat tour. Can you help us? Wait a second. Okay, thanks. May I have a moment? Hello. Hello. We are Irina and Daniel's friends. Hello. This way, please. Are you going to be at the wheel? No, you. We? But we don't know how. I'll show you. How are we supposed to drive it? Have you ever driven a boat? No, never. Are there any life buoys? There are life vests. They might save us, if anything. Alexei was entrusted with driving the boat. This time he did not have to look for the ignition. The operational panel, speed lever, start-stop button, reversing, simple as that. In fact, it's not difficult at all, almost like a car. Yes. But you won't be able to ride a bike if you fail with the boat. Godspeed. Are you ready? Yes, let's go. Do you like it? I was dreaming of it. It was so beautiful, breathtaking. And unforgettable. The kids were happy. I want to buy this one. Do you want to buy one? We should think about it. Why think? Just buy it. It's trendy to live in a boat. The total area is no smaller than their room in Kolpina. Let's take a picture. Of course, the background is amazing. Yes. Let's go, sir. It won't start. No fuel. <laughs> There's enough fuel. Local machines are not friendly to us. The dishwasher broke, the car wouldn't start, and on top of everything, the boat died. Yes, the odds are against us. What did he say? I press the button and the engine starts, but it won't start. What the heck? It's not Alexei's thing. Everything he touches breaks down. It's not your thing either. I did not start the boat and the boat died, and you failed with the dishwasher. And how to fix it? Let me see. Is this the key? Was it inserted at the start? I did not notice that. How come? They showed you, but you didn't notice? No, don't touch it. It's the light. And what is this? Mom, did you start it? Yes, let's go. You just need to press and hold the button. And it was the same with the car. Just press the button and hold. But it was the first time I had seen such machines. Just admit that you always fail. Help your dad park the boat. Teach him how to drive it. Come on, he can drive it well. He can, but you can't. Seems like they shouldn't buy a boat now, but when their son grows up. Did you like it? Yeah, it was cool. The engine didn't start for a while. But you made it here? Yes, we did. Very well, great job. Come on, Ivan. Having changed the boat to the taxi, the Popovs are going back to the village, and the Vidrins have just returned from the worst barbecue of their lives. Take off the shoes. Hello. 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 Who are you? Your new neighbors. I'm Daniel. I'm Yulia. Nice to meet you. We wanted to invite our neighbors to dinner, but we did not have food. Don't worry. Let's go to the kitchen and think what we can cook. The Vidrins have no food because Daniel dropped grilled meat in the dirt. Fortunately, a communal flat does not only mean a crowd of flatmates, but also eight fridges. Hello. I thought you would need it. Wow, your dish is so beautiful. Look, chicken is coming, or actually flying. We're going to throw such a cool party. Of course, a very good party. The neighbors came with their horn of plenty. And we stuffed our faces with chicken sandwiches and stuff. We're so glad to meet you all. You're amazing people. Had it not been for you, it would have been a catastrophe. They turned out to be very nice people, who will always give you a hand, and we dared exploit their kindness. We wanted to go to St. Petersburg tomorrow, but our host family left us only $14, which we spent today. We would like to ask you if you could lend us some money, about seven, eight dollars. Of course, no problem. The guys will return it. Fine. We hate to interrupt this hearty talk, but at the end of day two, the families have a video call. It is their only chance to share their impressions of the home swap. Hi. Hi, I'm Yevgenia. I'm Alexei. We're the Vidrins. I'm Daniel. This is Yegor and Irina, and our daughter Stefania is already asleep. Your house is wonderful. It's super cool. We liked everything. We did not expect to get in such a house. Neither did we. 
<laughs> when we saw the staircase, both of us and our kids almost threw up. It's awful. We're used to it. We just don't breathe there. How do you live in such a small room? I cannot fit in such a tiny dwelling. Well, we're not tall, so there's enough space for us. From now on, your dog's name is not Richie. But Demon. He bit our daughter, pissed on us. <laughs> Sorry, he's just stressed. We've never left him alone for such a long time. So, you don't like it there? Did you expect us to like it? We had too little money. We bought meat, watermelon, a melon, and spent all the $14. And we live a week on this sum. I think you're exaggerating. No, we're just very economical. Your friends called on us yesterday. They are very interesting and outgoing people. Nobody wanted to go home. It was awkward. This all Always happens. This morning, Irina's mother told us off for not washing up after yesterday's party. I thought she'd beat us with a stick. Have you forgotten Ludmila? On day one, she really told us off for not cleaning toilets as well. I'm so grateful to you. Am I not cleaning enough at home? Do not relax and clean some more, right? Yes, this is our life. We had an issue with the dishwasher. Water just started pouring from it. A lot of water and foam. Well, you could take the bikes and go to the river to wash them. I guess you're a bit bored there, aren't you? Our son fell ill this morning. Don't worry, he'll be fine. We'd like to warn you that we borrowed money from your neighbors. We wanted to show St. Petersburg to our kids. You are to return the money when you arrive. <laughs> All right. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I wanted to tell them something else, but when I saw them so small and modest, I just had to have mercy on them. They are young. They realize where they are and where they live. At least they improved their own room. Yes. Day three. After yesterday's party, Irina expected to work hard all the morning to clean everything, since it is their duty. Good morning. Did you clean everything? No, it was Yulia. You're a star. You cleaned everything. Thank you so much. But a communal flat is always about collective responsibility. Someone cooks, others eat and drink, and their neighbor has a headache. Daniel joined the scheme too. What are you doing? Washing up. No way. You see, I'm a new person. Having spent three days in the communal flat, Daniel got cosmic. Now he's not afraid of making the bed. What a mess here. Lie over there, I'll make the bed. How does it work? Or even of a mop. See how nice I am? I'm mopping the floor. Of course you'll do your best to leave Kolpino as soon as possible. We borrowed some money, now we can go to St. Petersburg. You need to clean everything. No, that's enough. I won't. We made friends with Ludmila. She won't tell me off. Screw the rules. And we don't even walk the dog. No, we won't walk the dog. We're the slaves of the communal flat and damned rules. We understand we'd better cut and run in the morning. Unnoticed by Ludmila, the Vidrins cut and run to the Russian cultural capital, St. Petersburg. Could you tell us where the station is? Turn left at the white building. And if we go on foot, just go straight, right? Yes, just go straight between those two buildings. Okay, thank you so much. It is very hot, but the economical Vidrins are going on foot. Here's the station. Come on, Yegor. Look, trains. I hope we're not late. Hello. How do we go downtown? To the Moscow station. Two tickets for adults and two for kids. Is seven dollars enough? Two dollars and ten cents. Thank you. Why are the tickets so cheap? This is a suburban train. I want a shawarma. We'll buy it if we have enough money. They have the money, but no time before the train. Never mind, over the past two days, the Vitrins have got used to hunger. Look, this is our train. I hope we'll be able to sit. Do they usually stand on a train? They lie down, each in a separate car. Find the seats for us. Sit down, Stefania. I can sit on the knees. Let's go. Do you guys like it? Yes! Very well. The Vidrins are on their way to St. Petersburg and Alexei to the hen house. Beasts, are you hungry? I've got something for you. Come here, dig in. Dad, may I feed them? Of course. Hey, buddy, do you want some? Feed the hens and I'll get them some water. But the Vidrin's hens love freedom and do not obey strangers. Ivan, you let them all out. Hey, you. Go home, go home. Look, you've got some nerve. Come here. I can't catch them. Come here, come here. I can get them. It was a catastrophe. They were running all over the yard. Gotcha. Dad! Let's catch this one. Don't run away. Open it. 
You have a nerve. Go home, join your friends. We could hardly catch them, but seems like we got all of them. We counted them. Hens are friendlier to Alexei than machines, so he entrusted mowing the lawn to his wife and started cooking breakfast. Your father can do nothing on his own, but you can. My hands were trembling. I was swearing. It did not start. Come on, dear, start. <laughs> you ungrateful thing. But then Alexei came. Did you have hiccups? No, I didn't. I cooked breakfast. I can't start this damn machine. Let me see. Okay. Show me the man's strength. It doesn't work. It won't start. Yevgenia should have realized that her husband is at odds with machines. He exploited all the talent at work, or perhaps not all is lost. Try to pull it more quickly. Yes, I told you. You just pressed the gas button. Really? Yes. It was a miracle. I had to press the button on the handle. And again, it proved that you have all thumbs. Shut up. It's going without a hitch. If a woman wants something, she gets it. Home swap. While Yevgenia was making honor laps in the yard, the Vedrins reached St. Petersburg. Mom, I'm hungry. Daniil, how much money do we have? 280, considering that we need to get back home. Get back where? To Kolpino, Irina, to Kolpino. Enjoy the beauty now and then back to our backwater. They will have to make a great effort to feed two hungry children having just 280. Look, a cafe. Here's the menu. We can only afford to buy a salad for Yegor. Maybe a cracker with anchovy. No, he won't eat that. Let's go. Look, meat pastries for 250. Only one tiny one? No, we don't have enough money. Let's go. I wish I could drink a glass of cold beer now. Everybody was sitting and drinking cold drinks. And eating. I wanted to sit next to them and say, please, please, help me. Feed us. Let's go to the baker's shop and just buy some pastries. We have sausage. Let's go. A bakery in the city center is not at all economical. We can't buy anything here. A loaf of bread, maybe. Too many meat pies? Too many meat pies. Mom, we would like to think something over. Think what over? How to get back home. Okay, what are your suggestions? How could we get back home? I'll think it over. Thank you. Let's go. We have food. Stefania is trying to find ways to get back home, and the Popovs are having a heated discussion over who is to wash up after the Friday's party. I mowed the grass, actually. And I fed the hens. I could have fed them myself. So what? Finally, they decided to wash up altogether. And Yulia is to cure her nephew. Ouch! Does it hurt? Yes, it hurts. Ouch! This one hurts most of all. Hey guys, come here! What happened? I spilt the brilliant green! Bungling seems to be typical of all the Popovs. How can Alexei be a steel worker? Oh no, how are we going to clean it? Brilliant green! Great job! And they spilt it right there on the carpet. Why did you not take care of it? I was busy washing up. Your washing up could wait. And why did you not keep an eye on them? Okay. The only thing that you're good at is boiling eggs. Your cotton discs won't help. They will. No. Yes. Keep silent or I'm going to kill you. I found a cleanser and started to rub the carpet as hard as possible. What a surprise for them. It won't come off. And a note, sorry. Of course I scolded them, shouted at them, but it won't help. It's my fault. I allowed them to go upstairs to do it. But Daniel faces an even more challenging task of organizing a boat tour for the kids with pretty much no money left. May I have the price list for excursions? Thanks a lot. You don't offer free tours, do you? Are you kidding? Too bad. It's 980 per hour. But we... Have no money. In our pockets. Maybe we could exchange something for the tickets? How? I don't get it. My earrings, for example? <laughs> Nobody wants to give us a free tour. Arena, we should find a place to pawn your earrings. Would you like a boat tour? With pleasure. It's about to begin. We have two dollars. Well, one ticket costs 14. We could pawn the watch. It's our first time in St. Petersburg. Guys from Pam are very stubborn. They would stop at nothing to get what they want. Well, okay, let's go. God, thanks. Thanks, you're such a kind man. Perhaps we looked so pathetic that he had mercy on us. 
Where should we go? Hello? What do you want? We've just arranged for a free tour for us. We're from Perm. They sent us here. Oh, let's go with me then. Okay, let's go. I'm from Perm too. No way. Hello, my friend. One of the captains turned out to be from Perm too. He even said he would not take money from us. He's such a nice man. Big props to him. We were brought to Kolpino, and we realized that people's relations do matter. We were given $14, which we spent yesterday, within five minutes. Yes, neighbors shared food with us. Then we arrived to St. Petersburg and realized that people's relations do matter. Thank you. You're welcome, my friend. This is what we call karma. The Popovs had a free boat tour in Perm on the Vidrin's boat, while the Vidrin's got a free boat tour from kind people in St. Petersburg. Yegor, do you know what it is? No. It's a building. You don't say... It is yellow, Venetian style. It has columns and sculptures of men. People call it a dick house. Look at this golden bridge. They say if you touch the golden stuff on it, you'll be rich all your life. Touch it, Dad. Wait, I will. I touched it. Now I give it to you. The Popovs seem to have never touched that bridge. But they still have a chance. We admired the beauty. Our stress relieved. We started to forget Kolpino. It wasn't that bad. The only good thing about Kolpino is that we're in St. Petersburg. Enjoy yourself. It's all for you. And for your son. And for you too. Look how beautiful it is. Yes. The Vidrin's adventures in St. Petersburg are coming to an end. And the Popovs remembered the third house rule. Will Handy Alexei be able to heat the sauna? At least there are no machines here. It looks fine. We have hot water here. Go find the firewood. I'll check it out here myself. You know nothing about it. What are you going to check for? I can find water. Here's water. You put it here. Where else would we have water? You said you know it all yourself. Wow, a barrel. Look, we could have just done it like this. You're crazy. And pour water. Alexei is the wisest in the family. However, he does not use his wisdom in life. Alexei would better keep away from machines. But will he screw up with the firewood? Okay, firewood. Where could it be? Let's check the yard. And in the shed. Well, I don't see any firewood, but there's a hatchet. Don't cut me! In such a case, they will both have to see the doctor. Mom will see to it. I can't find the firewood. And the garage? I checked the garage. There's no firewood there. And what's this then? Open your eyes, will you? Are you capable of anything without me? Don't shout. Shall I help you? No, I can do it myself. Don't break the door. I won't. Ivan is there to make sure that Dad breaks only what is supposed to be broken. Poof! Poof! Hold out your hand like this. Okay, go. The firewood is ready. Don't burn the sauna now. Take it. Let's place this broom on top. Well, well. Again, Dad can do nothing without me. Look, it's burning. You put the broom there? It was intended for it. If something is on the stove, it does not mean that it is to be burnt. But Alexei burnt the only sauna broom. It was quite expected. He always screws up. I just lost my temper and started packing. For the Vidrins, packing is the most pleasant and long-awaited moment. Day three is coming to an end. The families are going to leave the photos as keepsakes and go back home, carrying lots of new memories to Perm. Home swap. Let's count the budget balances. The Vidrin spent all the money and even accrued a debt of $7. As for the Popovs, they lived large but managed to save $113.40. It's enough to pay the debt and organize a feast of feast for all the flatmates. Home swap. The three-day survival challenge is complete. The participants share their feelings and thoughts and make a video. Dear house, you're a catastrophe. Remember the smell at the staircase? We almost threw up. The staircase is not the worst thing. We lived in a tiny room. But with three bathrooms, which I had to clean, one day somebody will ask me, Irina, what do you remember most about home swap? And I'll say toilets. Demon Richie lives in this house. He's an awful dog. He bit our kids. We were driven out of the market. Over there. We're with our kids. Over there. We're with our kids. So what? Dogs are not allowed here. We also tried to grill meat on the tiny barbecue grate like bums. I'm done. I'm sick of this place. 
But there are wonderful people living here who gave us food and money. To go to St. Petersburg? Dear house. We do not want to return here anymore. Goodbye, dorm. Dear house, huge house, you are so spacious. You have three floors, nowhere near our 180 square foot room. We did not like your rules, actually. I'm pretty okay with feeding the hens, but the rest... Don't run away! It's not our thing to party with friends every Friday. It's 2 a.m. And they want to sleep. The vitrines weren't like that. It's not as simple as we thought to handle such a huge house. Wow, it's a whole flood. Oh no. But I learned to use the grass mower. Come on, dear, start! Going without a hitch. Ivan, what did you like here? The attic and many toys. And the fact that it gave you chicken pox? Yes? Dear house, thank you for everything, but it's time to go home. Bye. Goodbye. The first thing Alexei did upon his arrival in Kolpino was to pay the debt. He deposited the rest of the money in a bank. Now the Popovs are saving up for a separate room for Ivan. As for the Vidrins, having lived in a communal flat for three days, they got family relationships back on track. Daniil is planning another trip to St. Petersburg to show the city to his wife and kids, this time sitting in a business class taxi. Home Swap.